Hello again, it's me, G2, here in Phoenix, Arizona. And we're running a landscape this time. We'll see if it all works out well. I hope so. Right now, I'm in landscape, but I don't know if y'all are in landscape. I hope so. So let's get this little puppy around. Well, it looks like I am in landscape. I'll be dark. But I think my, my, uh, uh, my messages are popping up on the, on the left. I don't know. If, hopefully it'll all work out. Let me know if you see this in landscape and if the uh, messages, the, the text are popping up on the left over, over here. Over here? Over here. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I'm G2. Listen, I'm a real estate agent here in Phoenix, Arizona. Yes? Cool. Very good. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Julie. Listen, I wanted to take just a minute uh, to, to share some information with you. If you're a buyer or a real estate agent looking to represent buyers, uh, at, in a VA transaction, there's a few things you need to know. I'm G2 Verado. I'm a real estate agent here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm also the state director for the Arizona Association of Real Estate Professionals, uh, uh, and and um, I'm also the government director of government affairs for VA Rep. So here's a couple of things you, you need to understand. When when you're if you're a buyer, you want to uh, make make sure that the real estate agent and the lender that you're uh, going to engage understand the VA process and understand how to represent you in a VA uh, transaction. A lot of times we'll get deep into the transaction and we'll find out that maybe the buyer has come to us with a lender that they were well entrenched with, uh, that the they believe that the lender understood the whole process and as we get farther down the road we find out that's not the case or when we're listing properties and we have a buyer uh, that's presented to us a, a buyer agent comes to us and asks uh, to uh, write an offer on one of our, our sellers listings it's a VA transaction and this just happened to me the other day so the agent uh, on the other side uh, we were writing the offer. We're the buyer agent, and we were writing an offer on someone else's listing. And the agent said to me, well, you know, I'm not sure that my, my um, uh, seller is going to want to get involved with a, a, a VA transaction because the seller has to pay stuff. That's, that's not true. It's absolutely incorrect. It's a, what really frustrates me is that real estate agents and lenders alike continue to, to articulate this, this, this concept that sellers must do something in a VA transaction. The only thing the seller has to do is obey the, the rules of the con, uh, transaction. They're not obligated to pay anything. Now, here in Arizona, our real estate transaction actually has a line that says seller agrees to pay, but that's something that our, board, our, our um, forms committee put on our contract. It is not a VA requirement. That happens to be something that's in our contract and it's negotiable. You can take it out. Sellers don't have to pay anything. Here's another thing that lenders don't know and I'm running into this all the time. In November of last year, November of 2014, the VA put out an amended uh, 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 notice of different fees in different states that allow are allowed to be paid by veterans. Now for a long time, for example, the termite inspection was not allowed to be paid by the veteran. It was considered what's, what's referred to as a non-allowable fee. Now non-allowable fees, before I get into this other explanation, non-allowable fees means that the veteran is not allowed to pay certain fees, and they're identified by name in the, in the uh, VA handbook, not allowed to pay certain fees. Doesn't say the seller has to pay them, doesn't say the realtor has to pay them, it just says the vet can't pay them. The lender can pay them, the vet can have them uh, factored into their loan uh, so that the, the lender can give you a, a, a lender credit maybe. These fees are really insignificant. I got to tell you, if you run across a transaction where a, uh, a say a $250,000 transaction is loaded with much more than five or six hundred dollars in non-allowable fees. I would be very, very um, concerned, and I would be talking to my lender about why are these fees greater than six or seven hundred dollars. I've seen numbers as high as a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars that buyer agents 
try to represent as fees that they want the seller to pick up for the veteran. That's absolutely incorrect. Just, uh, sorry about that, got my phone on, I forgot to turn it off. Uh, so so back, to, back to fees that are, are allowable and are not allowable. So in November of last year, November 2014, here in Arizona, the in termite inspection fee is an allowable fee that, uh, that buyers can pay. Buyers can pay that. Now here's something that really surprised me the other day. I ran across a transaction where an underwriter was telling our veteran buyer that the veteran buyer was not allowed to pay for a home warranty. That is completely incorrect. One million percent incorrect. The veteran can buy any service he wants to buy. So if you run across that type of a situation, also be aware that that's bad information. I'll tell you, I've been doing VA loans for nearly three decades. Been doing this a long time. My wife and I are long time in this industry. If you ever come across a situation where you're not quite sure that you're getting the straight skinny from either your real estate agent or your lender, please tweet me. You can reach me uh, on Twitter, at G2 Realtor. You can send me a tweet, happy to get right back to you. You can also reach me here on Periscope, at G2 Realtor, uh, 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 and uh, right here on Periscope. And thanks for the hearts, guys, truly appreciate it. Now here's something else that that um, is is a it's a misstatement by uh, by usually by lenders, and that is, well, tell your realtor to write into the contract that the seller is going to pay your closing costs. You know that's it. It it, it always puzzles me why lenders want to construct the negotiations. This is something that the buyer and the buyer's agent want to uh, manage. Uh, now, the, the lender can certainly you know, suggest that, that maybe the buyer asked the seller to pay some of their uh, closing costs, but here's the concept you need to keep in mind. You're a buyer and you want to buy a seller's house. And let's say in a $250,000 transaction, your closing costs, the amount of money that it would take you to actually close on this transaction, and that that is an assembly of several fees. There are some title fees in there. There are some lender fees in there. Uh, there uh, are uh, uh, other uh, small fees that, that are, are assembled that make up the buyer's closing costs. So let's say that that's about four grand. Now, let's say that you want to ask the seller for help. Now here's the concept you gotta keep in mind. I, the buyer, would like to buy your home, Mr. Seller, or Mr. or Mrs. Seller. And by the way, I would like you to give me some of your money so that I can buy your house. Now, depending on the market and the pace of the market and the, and the size of the market, um, that may or may not happen. In a very, very fast market like we're experiencing here in Arizona right now, it's a little difficult, a little bit challenging to find buyers, uh, excuse me, to find sellers who are willing to spend their money, give you their dough, a seller that wants to willingly give you three or four thousand dollars of their money so that you can buy their house. Think about it, you're a buyer, you wanna buy their house, and you're saying, I need some of your money so I can buy your house. Now, as you think about that, consider what the response might be. Now, if you're in a slower market where the homes are sitting for three, four, five, six months, the seller might be a little more uh, willing and probably even excited about doing whatever he can to help get his house sold. And if that means coughing up some of his own dough, he'll do that. But in a fast market, you got a little more of a challenge. So keep that in mind as well. You know, closing costs and talk to your realtor. Your realtor can help you uh, uh, sort through these, how the closing costs are assembled. And again, one, uh, one more thing to keep in mind. As we, as we come close to uh, October 3rd of this year, there are some new rules that are going into effect come uh, October 3rd. 
and they are the result of the Dodd-Frank law or act that was signed into law back in 2010. Now these new laws uh, or these laws that were passed and regulations that go into effect in October are going to tweak a little bit how uh, lending is, is completed and how you uh, uh, complete your tasks as a buyer uh, for your lender. So we'll cover more of that in another, in another scope, but I did want to just jump in real quick and, and um, uh, share with you this, uh, this idea of, of, of what allowable fees and non-allowable fees are. Keep in mind, there is nothing in Title 38, which is where our VA regulations reside, Title, Title 38 of the U.S. Code, there's nothing in that U.S. Code that says seller must do something. Nothing. Nothing at all. That's, that's a fabrication, unfortunately, by my industry and by the lending industry. What is said is that you, the buyer, are not allowed to do something. You're not allowed to spend money on certain kinds of fees. It's only about half a dozen of them, maybe a dozen at most. And they're named and they're articulated. And if you send me a tweet at G2Realtor, I'll happily send you back, just in your tweet, give me your email address, and I'll send you back a list of what those fees are that you're not allowed to pay and what the fees are that you are allowed to pay. It's really, really good information. It's free, love giving out free stuff. And again, I'm G2 Verado. I'm the, uh, a real estate agent here in Phoenix, Arizona. I've been doing this a very, very long time, nearly three decades. My wife is Lori Clendera. I'm also the director of VA Rep, the Veterans Association of Real Estate Professionals. I'm the Arizona State Director and this, uh, Director of Government Affairs. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, uh, send me a tweet. You can reach me on either Periscope or Twitter at g2realtor.com. Not true. Not .com, it's at G2 Realtor. And so I had a ball doing this scope. I'm gonna be doing a lot more. One of the things that I've been working on is, is getting my, my uh, scope legs under me so that I can really uh, produce some valuable information. Happy to share as much knowledge as I can anytime I can. You guys have a ball um, with Periscope. It's a great tool and, if, and people in my industry really want to uh, aggressively learn how to use this tool to get their message out, to help people understand what it is they do for you. You're the user, you're the, you're the consumer, you need to have some representation our industry is ready to do for it, okay? Talk to you soon, you guys have a ball. I hope this thing, all of my messages were going left to right, I hope they were going up and down on the left side. You guys have a great one, talk to you soon, bye-bye.